It's been a while since I have done a throwback video. I think the last time I've done a throwback MLS video was talking about that incredible comeback between the San Jose Earthquakes and the Galaxy in the 2003 Western Conference first round matchup. And I think the last time I've actually re recapped some of the first couple of season in MLS was like, what, three weeks ago when I talked about the 1997 playoffs. So with that being said, I think it's kind of overdue the fact that we are going to have to do a recap and since today is Thursday and I usually act Thursday as the throwback kind of day of me talking about some history of MLS. Today I'm going to look at the 1998 MLS season and the 1998 MLS season something happened during this season that would kind of kind of re really be one of the stereotype of MLS where a lot of people, whenever they think of MLS, besides the fact that there are all these kind of European superstar player that is way past their plot prime and c come to MLS to retire, which, by the way, that stereotype, I think people should start to f to kind of erase that stereotype because it's clear the league is moving to a new direction right now. But the stereotype that I think is going to still be with the league, unless this will stop in a couple of years, is expansion. Because this was the first season when we saw some expansion team come into the league. And we saw two expansion teams, one in each conference. Uh, in the Western Conference, we had the Chicago Fire. Yes, the Chicago Fire used to be in the Western Conference. And depending on what's going to happen in the next couple of years. I know next year they're thinking of actually moving Nashville back to the Eastern Conference. Well, not back to the Eastern Conference, but really put them in the Eastern Conference with the way that their region is. I still can't believe why Nashville is in the Western Conference. Consider they shouldn't clearly not be in the Western Conference depending on the region they have. And there's been a lot of discussion that Chicago might be moving back to the Western Conference and yada, yada, yada. But a lot of people don't know that the Chicago Fire used to be in the Western Conference and it looked like it could be the case again in the next couple of years now in the eastern conference expansion team we had the original miami team which is miami fusion and unfortunately this team as we all know they would later fold in 2001 and it wouldn't take until this year that we actually have another miami team in mls and that of course is inter miami now with two new team coming into the league that means that now we have 12 teams in mls and it kind of changed the, the playoff structure a little bit. Well, when I say kind of, it really isn't because, you know, you still have the top four team in each conference that will make it to the playoffs. And you still have more than half of the team to make it to the playoffs. And for all that, that is complained, the fact that there's just way too many teams to come to go to the playoffs. Well, we're still in an era in 1998 where this is the case, although it's not like the first couple of years where basically eight out of the 10 team made it to the playoffs and 80 percent of the team actually make it to the playoffs and that this time i think only four teams out of the 12 teams missed the playoffs so if you do the math which i'm not going to do it right now it's definitely less than 80 percent of the team that will make it to the playoffs compared to the first two seasons of mls now, in the summary of this 1998 season, uh, MLS Cup winner was the Chicago Fire, which was their first first title, and they become one of only two expansion teams able to win MLS Cup. Uh, you know, I I want to say who the second team is, but as a Quakes fan, I'm not going to kind of mention it because if I mention it, it will really, really bring me a lot of kind of ragey moment and kind of just bring brings me into a kind of mini rant talking about how that team basically stole that that MOS Cup away from us and that 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 MOS Cup that they got in their expansion year should have added into our record and you probably know which team that is talk that I am talking about uh supporter shield we got the LA Galaxy winning their first supporter shield off of the of their their franchise history uh, we had 192 match that was played, which is, I think, 34 more matches that than we had in the previous year. I remember 
back in the 1997 and 1996 MLS season, there was 168 match that was taking place. Now there is 192, and that's all because we have these two, two new expansion side, which means that there is going to be more games that is going to be played. If you count those, if you try to add the number of those, those team playing in this season and add it into the match play. Uh, goal scored, there was 701 goals that was scored, and there was 3.65 goals per match, which was quite high in terms of the number of goals that was scored a season. I think 1998 was one one of the highest goal scoring year out of any MLS season. And that, you know how people say that nowadays MLS doesn't really care about defense and that defending is kind of like, like a second secondary kind of, Kind of thing that most MLS team focus and that it's all about goal scoring that it matters. Well, that was kind of the case in the early days of MLS where goal scoring really was the thing. And I guess the reason why goal scoring was such a thing thing and that that's really why the, the, the league really wants to get get the amount of goal scored to be up because back then since fans don't understand that you know a new new draw could be just as exciting as a four free game that has happened and that fans tends to want to see goals in a game that's why why it w was great the fact that the league league saw that the goals total was was not only at its highest but the goals per match is among the high, highest out of the first couple of season uh top goal scored we had stern john who actually had 26 goals that season and he came one shy of actually tying Roy lassiter and w would have been before 2017 the fourth player to be able to score 27 goals in a single season in MLS. Uh, longest winning run was the Chicago Fire, who had an 11 game winning run from May 16th to, to July 9th. While the longest losing run, and I think this is the second year in a row that they earned this title, that of course is the New England Revolution, who had a nine game in winless run and it also takes play right around the same time when the Chicago Fire had an amazing winning run that takes place between May 13 all the way into July 4. Uh, the highest attendance that year was the LA Galaxy who averaged 21,784 people per game while their total season attendance was 348,459 people. Uh, lowest attendance for the second year in a row is the Kansas City Wizard, who they had a average of only 8,073 people attend their game, which I think that's even lower than last season when they were averaging around 8,500 people per game. And they only have 129,163 people. Now, last year, when I talk about how you know Kansas City owns the lowest attendance it was quite odd the fact that they had the lowest attendance in the league even though they were a team team in the top part of the Western Conference well this year it kind of makes sense why they have the lowest attendance and if you look at here on the right that is pretty much the reason they were basically bottom of the Western Conference and and if it wasn't for New England that finished with 29 points and got the wooden spoon, they would have got the wooden spoon. And it would perfectly make sense why people won't actually attend games to watch one of the worst teams in the league. Now, in terms of the total attendance in the league, we had 2,747,897 fans. And the average attendance is only 14,312 and definitely much lower than than it's been for the first couple of seasons. I mean, we're getting to a part of the the period where MLS, you know, as much as they had an amazing first season and the attendance was really high, these next couple of years would really be a struggle in MLS. And that we have all heard of the story how MLS came very close to bankrupt in the early 2000s. And, you know, we're at this point, this was really, really the, the road to MLS almost being bankrupt and almost didn't survive in their first couple of season because of low attendance. And I guess the other reason why there was a lot of low attendance in these games is mainly because they play in it in an NFL stadium. And you know nowadays 
the reason why MLS specifically mentioned that team have to build a soccer specific stadium is you know you don't want want to have have fans to have a bad bad experience watching a game in a cavernous NFL stadium and especially how these NFL stadium they have very poor kind of sideline and people kind of stay away from the game that's why why is one of the biggest reason why MLS decided for teams to build soccer specific stadium also the other reason is that you're you're going to to ha not have to worry about about some games where you have to play on a pitch where it's going to be overlap with some american in football kind of dimension as we've seen a lot of times back in the 90s and even in the early 2000s teams have to play play on a pitch where where it's they are going to have to play it it with an american football dimension already on it but it is what it is because of the fact that they play in an nfl stadium now going to the standings itself uh, in the Eastern Conference, we had DC United once again finish first place in the Eastern Conference. I believe this is the third year in a row that they finished first. Or actually, no. I think the first year they actually didn't finish first and that they actually finished... Um, I think they, they finished second and that Tampa Bay actually finished first in the Eastern Conference. But, you know, they once again finished top with a record of 24 wins. Eight losses and seven shootout wins with 58 points. While Columbus finished second with 15 wins, 17 losses, no shootout win, and 45 points. Uh, the New New York and New Jersey Metro Star also finished with the same record. In fact, Miami, New Jersey, New York, and Columbus all finished with the same record with 15 wins and 17 losses. And the reason why Columbus finished higher than the Metro Start and Miami is because they have fewer shootout wins. And back then, if you you get a shootout wins, you don't actually get all three points and that you only get like a point out of the game. So if you are able to win, if you're able to get get wins that is not a shootout win, that means that most likely you're going to get more points than when you do get a shootout wins. And hence, that's why here, you know, some of these teams, they might have... 15 wins on their belt but some of these are probably out of shootout wins and that in other words if i if i actually like some of these shootout wins are included into the 15 wins that they got so technically new york new Jer jersey metro start only got 12 wins out of regulation and that the three remaining shootout wins adds to the total of the wins that they had and miami technically they only had 10 regular their season wins and the five shootout wins basically add the number of 15 wins that they had. So, yeah. Uh, Columbus, of course, because they have fewer shootout wins, they had the most points compared to the Metro Start, who has 39 points. And Miami Fusion has 35. Uh, Tampa Bay Mutiny finished in below the red line with 12 wins, 20 losses, and one shootout win. But they only missed the playoff by just a single point. And if only this shootout win that they got was not a shootout win and just a a regular season win, they would have actually make it to the playoffs. Uh, and as I mentioned, New England, they finished in the bottom of the Eastern Conference and also got the wooden spoon that year with a record of 11 wins, 21 losses, two shootout wins, and only 29 points to their name. Uh, in the Western Conference, you got the Galaxy finish with a record of 24 wins, 8 losses, and 2 shootout wins with 68 points. Again, the record for the Galaxy and DC United is the same. The only difference is the shootout win. And as I mentioned before, the fewer shootout wins you're going to get, the, the more points that you are going to get. So, they got 68 points that year and win the Supporter Shield. Uh, they followed by the Chicago Fire, who who had a record of 20 wins, 12 losses, and 2 shootout wins with 56 points. Then you got the Rapids with 16 wins, 16 losses, and 2 shootout wins with 44 points. Dallas Burns with 15 wins, 17 losses, 4 shootout wins, and 37 points. And then you got the San Jose Clash, who once again finished below the red line. And I think this is the second year in a row that they just missed out on the playoffs as they had only... 13 wins, 19 losses, and 3 shootout win, And they missed the playoffs by 4 points 
by only getting 33 points, while Kansas City Wizard finished dead last in the Western Conference with 12 wins, 20 losses, and 2 shootout wins with 32 points apiece. Now, player of the week, or player of the month, actually, I'm not quite sure why I wrote player of the month there, so just pretend that it basically says player of the month there. Uh, for March, it was Kobe Jones. For April, it was Jorgen Sommer. For May, it was Peter Norvac. June, it was Ross Pauly. July was Roy Lassiter. August was Stern John. And September was Diego Serna. Now, the end of the season award, MVP was Marco Echeverri with the defender of the year, Lubos Kubek. Goalkeeper of the year was Zach Fortin. Rookie of the year was Ben Olsen, who is now the head coach of DC United. Coach of the year was Bob Bradley, who he was the guy that took this Chicago Fire team to become the first ever expansion team to win an MLS Cup. Uh, goal of the year was from Brian McBride, and the Fair Player Award goes to Thomas Dooley. So, yeah, there you have it. That is pretty much a quick overview of the 1998 MLS season. Uh, let me know in the comments below what do you think of this and that if you were watching MLS back in 1998, what was your favorite memory from the 1998 MLS season? But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, next week, I think when I I will do kind of one of these throw, throwback videos talking about an MLS season, I am going to be recapping the MLS playoffs in 1998. And that even though we know the Chicago Fire made it made it to MLS Cup and eventually win it all. Let's see how they actually made it and who they actually face in the MLS Cup in 1998. But either way, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time.